Thank you so much for staying with us. Time for another segment. Today we talk about career choices. How do you choose what to be when you grow up? Because that's the line that is used. When, when I grow up, I want to be so and so. Personally, when I, I was asked this question many years ago, who I want to be when I grow up, I used to say I want to be a policeman. I wanted to be a driver. Uh, that was in primary. At some point, I realized there can be someone else. So what I'm doing today is something that came to me uh, when I was in class seven. But still, I was confused. I wanted to be a lawyer and I wanted to be a pilot. I also wanted to be a nurse. <laughs> so confusion is in that phase. Today, we get the story of Mr. Kevin Kanisio Osua, how he chose his career and how has he moved from one stage to another. I also be helped to do this by an HR manager, Jane Muticia. Good morning and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning. If there's an area that has brought confusion to so many people in this world, he's choosing what they want to be in terms of their career. Uh, others, they have passion for something or they are talented or gifted to do something. And others would move to a career because of the package, I mean money. If I know this career has money, of course, I'll do everything for me to be there because I want money, I want to move fast. But now, how do I get to do that? I begin with you, um, Kevin. What you do today? Actually, you tell us who you are and what, what you're doing and how did you get to choose your career? <clears throat> okay, good morning, viewers. My name is uh, Kevin Kanisio Osunda. Um, currently, I'm a business development manager with a UK examination body called ICM mm -hmm. uh, with a long history in the education career. Uh, when I was growing up, uh, actually I had two options. I wanted to become a military officer, but at the same time I also wanted to become a priest, a Catholic priest. But I never got that chance of opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> when you finish high school, you realize ah, the results are out. You've played the December tournament football and everyone has gone back to school. Mm -hmm. So you have to identify what you want to be. Mm -hmm. And unless you identify, what, you identify what you want to be, it becomes a challenge. Uh, to, to me, the challenge was I had a sister who was a, she was a nurse. I had a cousin who had gone to military and it, it, it lost, so he was trying to get into police. So I'm in between. I'm trying to ask my sister and she's not sure. Try to ask my cousin and she's not sure. Mm -hmm. So what I did is, uh, first of all, get half time with myself. And half time with myself, I decided to start a career. I don't know if it's a career. I started washing cars. Mm -hmm. uh, the place called it can get me there. Mm -hmm. So from washing cars is when I realized, no, this is not my thing. Because I could interact with the people and they are talking about life after this, mm -hmm. life after this. So from the cars, I was able to raise money. I could wash cars from morning to evening. Then I uh, uh, realized that uh, these cars, they, had, they, were, they were having some, I could see vehicle, I uh, could see CG, uh, music and so on. Mm -hmm. So now they, they, they decide to have uh, the technology came in. Mm -hmm. And that's how I... Are you in primary or secondary at that point? At that point, now I had finished form four. Okay. Uh, I had finished form four. Uh, I'm looking at, uh, because from primary and secondary, all your parents wanted you us to become a teacher, mm -hmm. to become a doctor, mm -hmm. uh, and they're not telling you how to get there. <laughs> so, and for me now and myself, I'm looking at, can I become a, 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 a Catholic priest? Because well, I was looking at a, a priest when after the service, he's given food there, he's given <laughs> cook there. <laughs> and uh, greetings. <laughs> and greetings. So he's, he's having a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, also for the purpose of defending myself, I wanted to join forces. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So that, that was, that was my, my desire. But after clearing high school, I realized, no, mm -hmm. I've not qualified, and to get there, it's a process. And that's why I need to have a meeting with myself. So I need to talk to myself and realize what do you want. And uh, at that time, also my parents had retired, so it is you and yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's why we moved. I moved from the village from Mumias, then came to Nairobi, settled at a place called Kangemi, and that's how I started washing cars. And as I wash cars, interact with people, I realized the need for technology. At that time, I think 2003, that was when the IT was uh, being introduced. Mm -hmm. So I developed the, the desire to learn more in IT. Mm -hmm. And challenge being fees. Mm -hmm. I think at that time, there were no coops could not support uh, uh, the diploma uh, 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 student. Mm -hmm. They were only supporting university. Mm -hmm. And here, I've missed, few, I've, I've missed few marks to get uh, to university. Mm -hmm. So it's like now. It is done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I discovered I, I had to have a meeting with myself, and that's how I said, let me start somewhere. 
and to start somewhere is that started washing cars and from washing cars I was able to raise school fees. Mm -hmm. So I could wash cars from the morning and the evening I go to Kenya Poly where I did my diploma in computer engineering. Mm -hmm. Then after finishing diploma in computer engineering, I realized this, this desire for education mm -hmm. and I had an opportunity to, to join Zitec College. Mm -hmm. And when I joined Zitec College uh, 2007 mm -hmm. as a lecturer now mm -hmm. uh, in the technical aspect, mm -hmm. I realized I don't have I don't have the knowledge in how to deliver the content. I have the content on how to, mm -hmm. to, to, to repair a computer, to set up a network, but how now do, to pass mm -hmm. the message? How do, you teach? how do you teach? It became a challenge. But I could thank the institution because now they took us something, through, something called TOT, mm -hmm. where you're preparing this person, the technical person, to become a trainer, so that now you can deliver the message, the content that he, mm -hmm. that he has. And the moment they finished that, I realized now I have to go back to class. So I went to University of Nairobi, and pursued Bachelor of Commerce, but still in the line of IT. So mm -hmm. I could teach still at ZTEC, mm -hmm. then doing my degree at the University of Nairobi. I, wa I want you to hold there. Uh, it has been a journey. Mm -hmm. you, you, you went to engineering because you had interest in electronics and um, being an engineer in that case. And then you felt now, uh, I think I, I don't want to be in the field. I want to teach how to do this. Then you went for that. Exactly. All right. Jane. Mm -hmm. Here you are in the human resource. Mm -hmm. um, I also know, I, 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 knowing who you are, I know you have quite a profile in what you wanted to be and where you are. But maybe you can just mention one bit of how now you came to full realization of what you really want to do and how now you are where you are. And then you will address the, the kind of, uh, I don't want to call it confusion, mm -hmm. but uh, how defining of uh, how, how, how now do I settle at a certain point? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so for me it was kind of different. Um, I didn't think, I, I, I didn't grow my, with a lot of challenge in terms of when people ask you what you want to be, what you want to be BCD. Maybe because of uh, the kind of people that I grew up with. I grew up with my grandmother and my grandfather mm -hmm. and they were both retired, mm -hmm. working at home. My mother used to stay in a different town. I joined them much later and they were medics, my parents now. So I didn't grow up being asked that question of what you want to be. I wanted to just pass my exams and I always scored very highly, I always got presents mm -hmm. and that was adequate for my grandparents. So when I joined my parents again, it was about marks. They were happy with me being top three, you know. Mm -hmm. It was about the exams, not what I want to be per school and that was okay. Mm -hmm. Until around when I was in class seven, my dad had a lawyer friend. They would come with and my dad, I think, really admired him or for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. So for some reason, every time he would come, he would call, he'd start calling me now Wakiri. When they come with home, he'd be like, Wakiri, kuja apa, you know. Mm -hmm. So no, I said, not saying I want to be, I want to be a lawyer mm -hmm. because my dad would do that. Mm -hmm. And I went to, to high school and told everybody I want to be a Wakiri. But nobody ever sat me to tell me, to be a Wakiri, this is what you need to do. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine I didn't do, I majored in the sciences as much as I wanted to be a Wakiri. I didn't do history, I didn't do series, I don't know, the languages and all that. Mm -hmm. No one took me, I had to get an A in English or Swahili. Mm -hmm. I could have gotten if I had been told, mm -hmm. but my focus was elsewhere. The teachers kept saying, you have to get straight A's in, in uh, sciences and mathematics. So my focus was purely on sciences, and my interest was in law. Mm -hmm. So when the results came, and you're filling the clusters, and I rushed to law, and I'm thinking, wow, Jean with your Peter English. Eh? Mm -hmm. You know, you, mm -hmm. <laughs> you haven't and scored. You it. <laughs> yeah, and you haven't passed in Kiswahili. So I failed in both languages, actually. Mm -hmm. But I'd scored very highly in all the sciences. Um, mm -hmm. Why do I talk about that? Because again, like for those who are in high school and they are listening, mm -hmm. you have to know that to get to the university, to even to get to do that particular uh, course that you want, eh, mm -hmm. you have to pass, you know, your units. Yeah. Because you get there and you find that some of them are actually appearing in every cluster. Mm -hmm. If you fail in one, it drags you in all the others. True. So I ended up doing BSc, BSc General. Um, and I majored in biochemistry and chemistry, mm -hmm. which was not a, a cup of uh, tea. It was, it this was has been prompted because you have passed in sciences. Actually, I remember when I was called for that, it was such a tug of war at home because now my parents were medics. Mm -hmm. My dad is a clinical officer, my mom is a nurse. Mm -hmm. Both of them wanted me to do something in medicine because they know they would say, Okay, Melissa, surely you can start your own thing. You can open your clinic, you can do a BCD. Mm -hmm. My dad even got for me uh, an admission letter to one of the colleges to go and do lab technician. Mm -hmm. But I was like, Me, there's no way I'm going to touch blood, susu, <laughs> and all that. I'm not going to touch those samples. I'm not doing this. Mm -hmm. and, and I was forced, you know. It was serious. I was being forced to go and do that particular course. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I was like, no, I'm not going. Mm -hmm. uh, so finally, I ended up joining the University of Nairobi, and I studied uh, biochemistry. And from first year, even the lecturers would ask us, what do you want to be when you, when, you, when you leave here, when you graduate? And I was almost saying, ask me that again, and I shoot you. You know, because all this time, you don't know what you'll be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
you're in campus, and I wasn't the only one, and I'm even, even now as we speak, I'm very sure there are people who are in the universities who are doing courses, and they have not thought four years after first year, mm -hmm. where are they going to? What are they going to be pursuing? Mm -hmm. So um, I go through that, and that day I get an internship at Nestle. Uh, the internship was for, four years, for four months. I spent my life in the lab. When you do biochemistry and chemistry, either you're doing uh, selling medicine mm -hmm. or you're working in the lab doing analysis and things like that. So I'm in Nestle for four, for four months, mm -hmm. uh, three months in the lab. And I can tell you that was the most boring part of my, my career, you know. Just being there with reactions, it's so routine. You wake up every morning, mm -hmm. go get a sample of the water from the borehole for use in the factory, go to the factory, get a sample of the raw material, get a sample of ABCD. And because everything is controlled, of course, you're not going to find issues. Most of the time, you find everything okay. So, mm. so it was interesting the first one month when I was learning and, you know, it was new to me. Mm -hmm. From the second, third month, I was imagine I can't do this for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that year. So now, how do you start saying you're changing your career at, at that year? No one will understand you, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, the, f the last month, I happened to go to different sections. I went to marketing, went to HR, went to engineering. I went to all that to just understand how the business runs. And I was very excited with HR, whatever was happening HR. Mm -hmm. it, and I was just there for a week. Mm -hmm. So I, had, I participated in recruitment. It was very exciting. And then we had a, we were organizing a team building. Again, it was very exciting. So mm -hmm. maybe I was only exposed to two elements of HR that I found very interesting at that particular moment. Mm -hmm. um, so I go back to school and I'm telling everybody, imagine we, I'm in that year. And I'm very sure that I have to now look for money because my parents won't pay for me mm -hmm. to change my course after this. You know? Mm -hmm. So I go through graduation. I pass very well. Uh, and my friends are now looking at going to the UK, US to do their masters. And I'm telling them, imagine this is the end of me and science. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> so I proceed and then um, so I go home, tell my parents I'm changing to HR. It was the first time they were hearing HR, and my mom is like, Human rights? I'm like, No, human resources. Mm -hmm. And she's like, If you want anything, I'm taking you to KU. You go to education, you mm -hmm. teach sciences. Mm -hmm. You have already passed, done very well. You did well in high school in sciences. You have done that in the university. The next step, go teach. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Mommy, I can't teach. And, but I had seen this, it might happen in future because I knew how now my parents be like, we advised you when you're joining in first year mm -hmm. to do you a refused. different course, you refused. Mm -hmm. Now you're coming again, we're giving you advice, you're refusing, we cannot continue this trend. Luckily, I had not, not touched my help. I had saved all my help, but given I had like 60,000 when I was leaving, um, uh, help should not hear this, uh, when I was leaving, um, <laughs> when I was leaving fourth year. <laughs> and that is the money that I used to actually pay for my higher diploma, my postgraduate now. Mm -hmm. By the time we were graduating, I was already in my second semester now studying the HR mm -hmm. and, and I knew I was on my own on this. No one was understanding this in my family. Mm -hmm. I was on my own. I had to now find a way of how. And in that class, I was the only odd one, odd one out. Everybody had a social science. If you look at the adverts for human resources, it would be a bachelor's degree in social science and then that higher diploma or other certifications. Mm -hmm. So I was the only one in that particular class who was coming from, a, from another, another mm -hmm. field. Yeah, everybody was a sociology, education, counseling, you know. Mm -hmm. education, what they actually see is some that can actually now align to. Mm -hmm. People believe when you have done hard sciences, you're not social, you don't mm -hmm. have good interpersonal <laughs> skills. Now, that's what I was battling with. Mm -hmm. And I remember in the middle of all that, I almost thought, maybe I should drop and I just go do CPA. You know, become an accountant. Mm -hmm. they, have, they are as hard as the scientists, mm -hmm. you know. So we'll to some extent, mm -hmm. even at this point, you're still even confused. Even at this time, I'm still <laughs> And you know, I've now paid with my own money. Eh? <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I've paid with my own money, and that money has to make sure that I finish that, with that, that year without being broke. Eh? Mm -hmm. Uh, but somehow, then I, because of now that feeling, I had to stop now depending on my parents to get things for me. I said networking. Mm -hmm. I'm just 24, I've just finished school. I had to start networking. I was always at the, we used to call it a training coordinator, which could, I could imagine is the equivalent maybe of a dean or something in the university. Mm -hmm. I was always there, trying to get into understand her, getting her to know me as a person. Can I help with anything? And there are times she'd give me things to type. There are times she'd give me things to just help her file. You know, it was, I had to just have a contact to start getting to know people who are in this field who would know mm -hmm. as much as I've done a hard science, I actually have good interpersonal skills. Mm -hmm. And when we finished, I dropped my CV with her. And because of that also, I went, I went, I went, I bought so many books. Net was not as high as it is now. Mm -hmm. Just to understand how do I do, how do I write my CV to be outstanding? How do I excel in interviews? It was like, it was like another job, just trying to sharpen my skills in writing CVs and pursuing interviews. Mm -hmm. I remember I had a very book, book that was called Knock Them Dead. And it was just about interviews. And I would read that book. I would ask myself people. I would coach people. I was, I, I'm, I've not even become a HR person. Mm. No, you're but training yourself I'm, to I'm become just, a I'm, HR. I'm, no, I'm training myself how to pass. Okay. How to break the wall of getting that job mm -hmm. with a hard background like I had. So, like what? 
I didn't have mark. I finished uh, school finished in November. So stayed home in December, waiting for results and ABCD. The results come out in January. What do I get? A call from the college. We have furthered your CV, you and 15 others, to this particular organization. You go for inter you go for you go interview for an internship. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I was the best, so it paid off. And I remember that night I didn't sleep because I'm, I'm thinking I'm competing with people who are already made for the market. Mm -hmm. I am coming as a as a stranger mm -hmm. in this particular field. Mm -hmm. So luckily enough, I got the I got the internship. It was paid. I was very excited. Um, I remember um, when I was paid my first salary, I had to go home and say, Mommy, see, I told you I'll get a job with this. Hmm? Mm. So it was an internship and it was paying pay, pay me $400. That was like 40 k at that time. Um, it was a lot of cash for an intern and I was, I was over the moon. Um, so I changed that. Mm -hmm. I start working and I do HR for nine years. And then I pick up and I'm like, imagine I'm done with this now. Mm -hmm. What do you want to be now? I, I can't do this anymore. Huh? Yeah? <laughs> you know? <laughs> you have tasted HR for nine I years. I do nine years. I've grown from an intern to a regional HR manager in charge of Eastern Africa. I was in charge of Rwanda, Kenya, Tanzania, Sudan, uh, Tanzania, and uh, Eastern Africa. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, imagine I'm now done with HR. I can't sit on this desk anymore. Mm -hmm. And now I start my own thing. All right. Now, as an HR, mm -hmm. you have met Kevin. Mm -hmm. Kevin has moved from this levels of life mm -hmm. because he feels I want to be this and that. Mm -hmm. Now as an HR when you employ him, mm -hmm. are you employing someone who is so ambitious? Are you worried to have him uh, in your farm or mm -hmm. he's okay? If he does what? What is the question? He, he has moved levels. Mm -hmm. He has been uh, from the engineering. Mm -hmm. He has moved. He, w he wanted to be the engineer. Now he doesn't want to go to the field. He has come back to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. Now you have met this person. Mm -hmm. As all mm -hmm. these career lines, mm -hmm. he, has mm -hmm. wanted, he wanted to be a BCD. Mm -hmm. But now, but now he has stopped that. At the, when you look at that particular person mm -hmm. as an HR, mm -hmm. do you see an ambitious person? Or can you dismiss them when they come? Um, I want to say that again, that depends with individuals and individuals who will be sitting in that particular HR, because this is not learned in school. This depends with how exposed you are mm -hmm. and how you see life. And why I was giving my story so for people to know that, imagine you, don't have to, you also don't have to do the same thing all your life. Mm. Okay. Things change every time, you know. Things change every time. And if I listen to Kevin, um, to his story, he said he was doing computer engineering and he was training students to do this computer engineering, mm -hmm. how to repair, how to do APCD, how to work on that. And then he realized he was not doing his A game because he was not trained to pass that knowledge. Mm -hmm. So he actually went to school Again, to, to, make, to help him, not leave the computer engineering, but to help him now become an A person mm -hmm. in making sure that the students fully understood. Mm -hmm. Not just the technical, but the how of passing that knowledge. Teachers are taught how to teach adults, mm -hmm. and that's what he went for. And he said he went to that after he, was, he went through the trainer of trainer program with, with Zetec. Mm -hmm. So it, what he's saying is you have to continuously improve yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't reach. Mm -hmm. Just because you have that degree or that diploma, if you feel you have reached, you'll be faced out. Mm -hmm. Now him, he grew from being a lecturer. You, you'll be surprised. Mm -hmm. uh, you, g you went to train, train of trainers at mm -hmm. ZTEC. Yes. Now you are now doing BCOM. Yeah. Uh, uh, ZTEC gave me an opportunity to expose myself to more careers. They were, we used to have career talks, professors would come mm -hmm. in and I could ad admire them. Mm -hmm. Then I said, I'll not leave the engineering aspect uh, or the, the, business, uh, the IT aspect, uh, mm -hmm. but I can still go back to class and now add more knowledge. Mm -hmm. So I went to University of Nairobi and took Bachelor of Commerce, but still specialized in the IT aspect. Mm -hmm. So I'm still having the IT and now the, the knowledge increased. Mm -hmm. So now I could now even now start teaching with confidence mm -hmm. because now I have a, de I have a, have a degree. But in the process, because uh, I've also have to, after discovering myself, I realized, no, other than just teaching alone, mm -hmm. um, I want to tell my story. I want to tell people my story. Mm -hmm. And uh, I attempted to, uh, to move out of ZTEC. And uh, I uh, got an opportunity to join an examination body called City and Guilds because now I've been teaching and they've been assessing my students they, mm -hmm. they are passing. Mm -hmm. What about now? What about if I now try to develop the content and mm -hmm. see if someone else teaches and assess my content. Mm -hmm. So I joined City and Guilds as a business development manager. And from the communication and uh, uh, networking engaging, they also realized this guy, we can still use him as a trainer. Mm -hmm. So they gave me an opportunity to, to move to South Africa and pursue still the TOT mm -hmm. again now at a higher level. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. uh, assess assessment college. So I did uh, the, the TOT and I came back and they told me now, we're moving you from a business development manager to a quality, excellent executive, mm -hmm. now covering 10 countries. Mm -hmm. And I'll be training now trade lecturers so that they can train the syllabus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it gave me an opportunity to interact with at least over 500 colleges across 10 countries. Mm -hmm. right? Just growing and en engaging people. I also realized now, with this de a degree and the TOT, I still need more knowledge and network and so on. Mm -hmm. I came back to the University of Nairobi and I did my master's in project planning and management. Mm -hmm. Why now project and planning management? Mm -hmm. As the head of uh, quality, I was assigned projects. Mm -hmm. And I don't want someone to, to say, yeah, we have this boss here who does not understand the mm -hmm. content. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I came back to the University of Nairobi and pursued my master's in project planning and management. So you see, as much as I've done diploma computer engineering, I've done Bachelor of Commerce, then I'm doing a project, I'm asking myself, are they related? Yes, they are related because the, the diploma helps me to deliver the, 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 the technical, the, the, the technical yeah. bit. Mm -hmm. uh, then the, 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 the Bachelor of Commerce, also still in the line of IT. I'm mm -hmm. still training the, the IT aspect. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, I also, also have the, uh, the TOT. Mm -hmm. so the, the TOT is now helping me to deliver the content. Now, as we talk about the 21st century, people talk about projects. You want something that you can run very fast and deliver, mm -hmm. rather than now, eh, because if I'm very sure that all of us will not be working here for the next 100 years. You want new challenges, and that's why now I moved to the, to the project mm -hmm. management. All right. Now, um, I don't know if I just want our to say something, would, would I just want to, say something to, yeah. to what um to what he's saying. And what he's saying is very key. Mm -hmm. I, I first of all like that you're a diploma person. You started from diploma, but has grown to the level that you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And whatever he's saying is like he's self made. You know, he's able to say I need this to go to the next level. I need this to go to the next level. Mm -hmm. And that is a game changer. Anybody who is watching, if you want to pursue your career, you have to know about to look ahead mm -hmm. and see for me to go to the next step, what do I need to do today? for me to be there tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Very, very important. Actually, I'm, the I'm question I, I wanted to ask I'm you, I'm almost doing this. <laughs> if, if he has moved all these levels, mm -hmm. and at, the, at some point he, he needs a job, there, there's, a, there's a maze or a notion going out here, uh, where you're, you're overqualified. You know, you have done this and that. So, so we have a group of people who fear to do much mm -hmm. uh, for them to be dismissed because they are overqualified. Now, what should limit me from having all those levels in life as much as I can get. I think nobody should limit you. But the most important thing, and I like his story, and I'm going to back to go to his story, mm -hmm. which is, are these things aligned? You know, what are you do just doing for the purpose of accumulating papers? Mm -hmm. Or are they helping you? Exactly. Yeah, and, but I don't have a point with people going even for a master's. If you finish your PhD, if you are a bachelor's, and you want to go for a master's immediately instead of wasting time home, please go for it. Mm -hmm. But you have to use your wisdom when to talk about it and when not to talk about it. If I'm looking for an assistant, I don't have a PhD. If you keep bringing that in my mind, I think this one is a, an academician. Maybe his goal is to go and teach somewhere. So there are times that you have to use your wisdom, know when to fish to bring out now that particular um, master's, mm -hmm. when not to bring it, you know, mm -hmm. because depending on what I require. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But please attend one time, invest in yourself. But be guided, be guided by the market, be guided by where you want to go. Mm -hmm. Don't just do because uh, people are doing MBA. You rush and do an MBA without thinking, how will this help me in whatever I want to achieve? Exactly. Actually, next time we'll be looking into the job market and how you, you make yourself available for those positions. Apparently, we are out of time and I appreciate our director has added us two minutes and which is Isha Aisha. Thank you so much <laughs> for coming. Uh, this, this is a series. Uh, back home, this is a series that has begun today. It will be continuing. You will learn so much from the career, how to choose your career, how to find yourself in the job market, what you need to fight for your space even after employment and all you need we will be having Jean here with us for all those series we'll be having they have been my guest Mr. Kevin Canisio Osundo now that you've done masters and I don't know PhD to get with Dakari and Jean Mutise uh, HR manager uh, you have your own farm and that's a good thing by the way you can hang out now you become the best you can be thank you so much for being part of us this morning i uh, have yourself a very good day i'll be seeing you again in the evening with the news until then have yourself a very good day my name is Dereva Hilary.